I would like to call this meeting to order. Will you all please rise and join in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mayor Litt? Here. Vice Mayor Reed? Here. Councilmember Woods? Here, ma'am. Councilmember Marciano? Here. Councilmember Tinsley? Here. Are there any additions, deletions, or modifications this evening? No, ma'am. I would like to call Alan Owens, Finance Administrator, to the podium for a presentation, please. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the council. Uh, again, Alan Owens, Finance Administrator. Um, and uh, we're pleased to be able to present the fiscal year 2020 comprehensive annual financial report to the council. A copy of that report was uh, mailed directly by our auditors, Markham LLP, to the council a week ago per their required standards for, communicate, for communication, uh, communicating with council. Um, and they will be up in a second to uh, make their presentation, but I would just like to say a couple of things. Uh, this report has become increasingly complex over the years, as evidenced by this year's report, which is uh, over 200 pages, I believe, which is quite a bit more than when I started doing audits for municipalities, I won't say what year. The typical report might have been 30 or 35 pages for the audit report. Um, and again, due to new standards every year, it seems like it's become more and more complex, and. Uh, and voluminous, and I would like to take a second just to thank our Deputy Finance Administrator, Sean O'Brien, for uh, his work in actually putting the schedules, the notes, everything together that goes into this 200-page document and co coordinating all the work with our auditors, Markham LLP. So again, I would just like to recognize Sean and, and, and thank him for everything that he does. I think he's out here somewhere, so thank you, Sean. Uh, and with that, um, I would like to introduce uh, Tammy Goldstrich. She's a director with Markham LLP, and she'll be here in uh, a second and give you an overview of the results of the audit report. So, Tammy. Hello. Uh, hello, my name is Tammy Goldstrich. I'm with Markham. Um, I've been working on this audit for the past five years, I think it is. Um, I'm here just to present the some highlights of the financial statements and to go over a few of the, the components of the financial statements today. Um, if we turn to the, the report starts out on um, the letter of transmittal, Roman numeral one. This is from the city manager and the finance administrator put that together. On page nine, this is a report from the GFOA Certificate of Achievement. Uh, the GFOA started this program a few years ago to encourage transparency and full disclosure in the financial statements. And in 2019, the city was recognized with this award because it achieved that goal and provided users with appropriate financial information. And so we hope that 2020 would be the same and I would believe that we would uh, get another certificate for 2020. On page one starts the independent auditor's report from Markham. Um, just to highlight a few of the terminology as part of our procedures, we audited the governmental activities, each major fund, and the aggregate remaining fund information of the city as of and for the fiscal year September 30th, 2020. Management is responsible for the preparation and fair presentation of these financial statements in accordance with accounting principles. Our responsibility as auditors is to express opinion on the financial statement based on our audit. We did not audit the financial statements of the police or the fire pension, and those were audited by other auditors, uh, and they provided their reports to us. We conducted our audit in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards and standards of financial statements contained with government auditing standards. Those standards require that we plan and obtain reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements are free from material misstatement. And in our opinion, on page two, the financial statements present fairly in all material respects the financial position of the governmental activities, each major fund, and the aggregate main remaining fund information. Included in this document as well is the required supplementary information 
which is the management's discussion and analysis, budgetary comparison, OPEB and pension information. And that information, although not part of the financial statements, it's still considered essential and required. So we applied certain limited procedures to that supplementary information. Sub, there's other supplementary information, which includes the combining and individual fund information, uh, which is presented just for additional information. And that was not subject to our auditing procedures. Um, but in our opinion, we believe that the combined and individual financial statements are fairly presented in all material respects in relation to the basic financial statements as a whole. Uh, moving on to management's discussion and analysis, it's presented on pages 4 through 17. It's a good summary of the current year highlights as well as a comparison to the prior year balances and activities. Starting on page 18 are the actual numbers of the financial statements. The statement of net position can be found which is using full accrual and it brings all the assets and liabilities of the city on the books as of year end. And you can see the total assets is about 234 million, while the total liabilities is about 122 million. Um, the statement of activities is on page 19, um, which recognizes revenue when earned and expenses when incurred, regardless of the timing of the cash flows. On page 20 is the balance sheet of the governmental funds using the modified accrual basis. Um, the city has two major funds, the general fund, which is always a major fund, and the one cent sales surtax capital improvement fund. And then there's a column that's all other governmental funds, which includes every all, all the other funds. Um, and the detail you can see starting on page 110, which is in the supplementary combining statements. Um, on page 22, you can see the revenues and expenditures and changes in fund balance. Um, the ch net change in the current year was a decrease of about 3.4 million, which was primarily due to the large amount of capital outlay spent for the construction and improvements done by the city in the current year. Page 24 is the statement of net position of the proprietary funds, which are the internal service funds. The city has the fleet maintenance and the self-insurance, which you can see the breakdown starting on page 127 of this report. And one of the last reports is the uh, statement of fiduciary net position on page 27, which includes all three of the pensions combined, the general employees, the police and fire pensions, and the breakdown of those can be found on page 130. On page 28, you can see that the change of the fiduciary funds, all the pension funds in 2020, was an increase of about $10 million, and that's due to uh, favorable returns on investments realized in the current year. Pages 29 through 93, what Alan was referring to, the, the voluminous notes now that I'll go into detail of all the account balances and accounting policies adopted by the, the city. Um, and that's followed by the required supplementary information, the supplementary information, budgetary comparison schedules, and also the statistical information is included in the report as well. Um, moving on to the back schedules, on page 158 starts our additional reports on, um, that were part of our audit. Uh, the first one's the report on internal control over financial reporting and compliance with other matters. In planning our audit, we considered the city's internal control over financial reporting as a basis for designing the audit and for expressing an opinion, but not for the purpose of expressing an opinion on the effectiveness on internal controls. So we don't express an opinion on the, the, the effectiveness, but we, in our process, we didn't identify any deficiencies in internal control uh, or material weaknesses. We also performed tests of compliance with certain provisions of laws and regulations, and the results of our tests disclosed no instances of noncompliance or other matters to be reported. On page 160 is the report on compliance with federal programs and on um, internal control, this is the single audit. Uh, the city hasn't had one or hasn't been required to um, 
comply with a single audit for the last few years. It's only if uh, over $750,000 would have been expended in one year. So this is the first year in a while, and it's primarily due to the approval of some FEMA funding, um, really Hurricane Irma. And so as part of our process, we had an opinion on the compliance of the federal programs, and in our opinion, the compliance requirements that have a direct and material effect um, that the city complied with all compliance requirements. Um, there was no findings in the financial statement audit nor on the single audit. And that is it with the report. Um, in addition to the financial statements, we also um, were provided provided you on in our communications with those charged with governance, a separate letter, um, just to go over a few of the highlights. We did not encounter any difficulties with management in performing our audit. Uh, we had no corrected or uncorrected findings as a result of our audit procedures. There was no disagreements with management, and that's really all I have. Um, I do thank Alan and Sean and their team. They do a great job in putting this document together and helping us with a smooth audit process this year. So that's all I have. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Thank you, Alan. At this time, I'd like to call Natalie Crowley and Todd Engel for a presentation, please. Uh, Madam Mayor and Council Members, if I may, just want to uh, prelude to the presentation on uh, this past Monday at 3.30. We had a community meeting with uh, our neighbors at uh, Osprey Isles, Carton Oaks, Bay Hill, Ancient Tree, and Ibis even. Uh, to discuss uh, the progress that the city has made or the attempts to make progress at, uh, in trying to uh, warrant a uh, traffic signal at uh, North Lake, Bay Hill Drive, Sand Hill, Crane Boulevard. You know we've been attempting to do this for about three years now, if not longer, uh, and uh, our intent was to inform the residents in that area uh, of our efforts and where we were at today. Um, staff is certainly as well as this council who's directed us uh, to attempt to get this traffic signals more, uh, you know, our primary motive is the safety, uh, not only of our residents, but all who travel on North Lake, which if you've ever been on North Lake, you know how dangerous it is. So uh, we continue our efforts to try to obtain permission to put the traffic signal in. And today, uh, tonight, uh, we'd like to share that presentation that we made. We have information for you at your dais uh, uh, that we handed out. And um, uh, after this, at under city manager report, if you'll give me a few moments, we'll discuss it even further. But as far as the presentation, I'd like to, to do that now. Thank you. All right. Good evening, Madam Mayor and members of the council. My name is Natalie Crowley. I'm the director of planning and zoning, and, uh, and I'm very pleased to be here this evening with Todd Angle, our city engineer, in the audience as well. We have Andrea Troutman from Pinder Troutman Consulting, who's been diligently working on obtaining uh, the proposed uh, permits necessary for this signal. So as Mr. Ferris mentioned, we did have the opportunity earlier this week on Monday to make this presentation. So we're going to be presenting the same information for your benefit this evening, as well as others in the audience. Uh, Todd is going to be doing the vast majority of the presentation. Um, uh, but, and so I will briefly lead off. The subject intersection, uh, which uh, the proposed signal uh, is, is the uh, ancient tree intersection of North Lake Boulevard and south is Bay Hill Drive. Uh, this is the subject site. I think many of you are familiar. You can see ancient tree. This is a slightly outdated aerial. We also see Osprey Isles in the aerial, as well as Carlton Oaks and Bay Hill to the south. So really, just we're, we're here today to talk about the signal. But I, I think it's important to note, and I think it's important to emphasize that Ever since the city started 
expanding out west, the city has been extremely committed to looking at North Lake Boulevard overall, and, and, and more specifically, the safety conditions along North Lake Boulevard. And this ties into so many different elements, including speed, and uh, our, our police officers have, have been able to successfully reduce the speeding issues. And, and it wasn't easy to get to this point. We've had to go through several actions that are necessary to obtain uh, a, a united jurisdiction along North Lake Boulevard. So I was going to show a couple slides, or Todd is going to show a couple slides to show that, and specifically that, to demonstrate that we do have jurisdiction to provide a signal for this intersection. The City Council has long funded this traffic signal. It has been in the approved budget for several years now, uh, so the City Council has remained committed to fully funding this traffic signal. We have received full written confirmation from Palm Beach County that the city of Palm Beach Garden, Gardens has the authority to warrant this signal. This was issued in 2016. Todd will show more details on that. As I mentioned, we not only have the jurisdiction um, for the signals, uh, but we're also going to show the, really why the state statutes give us that jurisdiction uh, based on the fact that it's uh, uh, original jurisdiction based on that specific state statute that you see before you. And then we're going to walk you through the status of the permits, because it's not just one permit, it's several permits. Uh, you have the underground permit, then you have the above ground, and then you have the signal warrant. So Todd's going to talk a little bit more about the status of each of those permits. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Todd. Good evening, Council. Todd Engel, City Engineer. Um, I'm going to touch on a few key terms. Uh, one of those is going to be traffic volumes. Obviously, that's the main volumes of traffic on the street. Our major uh, traffic volume is heading east in the morning on North Lake Boulevard and then again west in the afternoon peak hours. Also going to talk about excessive delays, meaning the delay someone, if they want to make a turning movement at this intersection, how long do they have to wait? That's an excessive delay. Also want to talk about conflicts. Conflicts is how many movements, if a, someone's coming out of Ancient Tree and they want to go eastbound, how many conflicts do they go across to try to make that particular movement? And we're going to talk about traffic enforcement authority, which is the ability to write traffic tickets, pull people over. And we're going to talk about traffic control jurisdiction, which is the ability to set speed limits, put in stop signs, all the way up to warranting and putting in a traffic signal. So here's the subject intersection. The main concerns at the intersection is obviously speeding, in particular in the AM peak and the PM peaks for this. The typical 55 mile per hour posted speed limit, typical speeds are anywhere between 56 and 60 dur during that time frame. We're also going to talk about the additional of the movements that we've added. So Ancient Tree came online. That added the additional movements to the northbound area. Then, and the city wants to eliminate their entrance to the golf course because we had a separate entrance and a separate opening. We wanted to make that safe. So we actually moved our entrance to this intersection here. So now we've eliminated one intersection and put everything here. And then we funded the signal in an attempt to get that signal put in place. Then we look at North Lake Boulevard as a whole. What are the issues with North Lake Boulevard? Well. We have speeding, we're going to go right back to speeding again, and then gap creation. There's a free right that comes off of Coconut. So typically in the AM traffic platoon, all the way out there because there's no breaks in traffic, so that doesn't give any gaps for this intersection, nor does it give any gaps for Osprey Isles or Carlton Oaks or Rustic Lakes. And so if a signal got installed here, temporarily stopping traffic, it would create those gaps for the AM traffic to move Carlton Oaks, Rustic Lakes, and Osprey Isles in multiple driveway entrances and safe turn lanes is the other things we look at as a whole in the corridor. And again, we eliminated our driveway and put it here. And then what's going to come before you next month at council will be uh, a turn lane, proposing a turn lane to get into Osprey Isles. Right now they do not have a turn lane. So they have 60 mile per hour traffic. They've got to try to slow down and pull into Osprey Isles. So we're in the process of starting to go through to get them a turn lane in the Los Isles. I want to show you a video from May of 2019 and it sort of sums up the frustration of the residents in the area.
Sport. Ask anyone who drives on North Lake Boulevard during rush hour, and they'll tell you the same thing. It is a nightmare. That's especially in and out of the acreage in Loxahatchee area. All new this morning, traffic jam San is talking to those frustrated neighbors. Just curious if somebody else has to, you know, perish before they get it in their heads that it has to get done. Weeks ago, Bay Hill resident Rich Hoffman was involved in a crash right in front of his neighborhood on North Lake Boulevard. Earlier that day, a deadly crash shut down the same road for hours. You're basically pulling out from a neighborhood onto a freeway, you know, 55 mile an hour plus, when those people do obey it. <laughs> Kurt McCullough has lived in Bay Hill Estates for two years. He says his daughter just got her license and there are certain times of the day he won't let her leave the neighborhood. I won't let her drive in the mornings early or late in the afternoons. Fed up, residents took it upon themselves to put up a sign telling drivers not to make a left turn during rush hour. We watched as this woman in the white minivan sat in the left turn lane for several minutes before giving up and deciding to turn right. One thing residents say has helped a traffic enforcement operation. Palm Beach Gardens police got jurisdiction on North Lake Boulevard in January. Since then, they've increased the number of units patrolling the area during rush hour and placed speed trailers in the road. Uh, until Gardens most recently started really uh, patrolling it more frequently, it was pretty much out of control. Well, the mayor of Palm Beach Garden says the city has the money to fund the light in front of Bay Hill, but the county conducted a traffic survey just last week and says the traffic does not warrant a signal. So the money's there. They're still pushed back to make this happen. So what's next? Well, we actually just found out there's going to be a meeting on Monday at 6 o'clock in the evening to address the traffic concerns in the area. It will be at Seminole Ridge High School Auditorium, and the public is invited, Ashley. So this is really an opportunity for those frustrated residents to voice uh, have their voices heard and yeah, we know you'll be on top of that we'll know of what comes out of monday's meeting we also looked up the number of traffic accidents for the past three years in this area we found a total of 44 crashes along the four mile stretch of north lake boulevard between beeline highway and bay hill estates two of those were deadly the city of delray beach is in hot water <laughs> That's not the city of Palm Beach Gardens. <laughs> All right, so that's just a demonstration of the frustration. That was in May of 2019 when that report was. I didn't go to the meeting that they had, but I assure you nothing has happened from May to today about the traffic. This particular video we want to show you. When we did the warrant, we did some videoing out there to, to look at the actual situation out here. This one, we want to point to the conflicts that are in the intersection. So we have opposing traffic movements coming from the north-south trying to get on a very busy highway. So that was, you, you could see the points of conflict there. So that, again, we've talked about excessive delay, meaning that the car is going to sit there for over a minute trying to make that turn. That's not necessarily the case here. However, there's specific conflicts in this intersection that, that oh, conflict one another. So traffic is having a very hard time making these maneuvers and they're conflicting with one another. This particular one is an accident and it's due to the conflicts within this intersection. I'm going to keep your eye on the white truck. So you can see the, the actual white truck was trying to cross three lanes of traffic that moving very fast. Some are stopped, some are not stopped, which those conflicts exist at this intersection. Sorry. So this rep this represents the way North Lake Boulevard used to be. 
When we first annexed out there, the city controlled a very small portion of that area. So we had traffic enforcement of a small portion. Particularly that was in front of Carlton Oaks and Osprey Isles because that's the first area we annexed. Then we annexed Bay Hill Estates. So we got traffic enforcement in front of there, but we also got traffic jurisdictional control because we annexed to the other side of North Lake Boulevard, and that's very important. Then as we went in front of Avenir and some other areas, we didn't have any jurisdictional control whatsoever. So we did a series of annexations and agreements with the sheriff's office that gave us full traffic enforcement in this area. So before when we had a hodgepodge of enforcement, the city now controls three miles stretch of North Lake Boulevard. So we, from Carlton Oaks all the way to Great View, we have traffic enforcement out there. So now we have the ability to write tickets and obviously we've been doing that for the last couple of years. It's helped out a lot. What we still have through the annexation of Bay Hill Estates is traffic jurisdictional control. Again, that's the ability to warrant and put up a traffic signal. Palm Beach County owns the road, but we have the actual traffic jurisdictional control of this particular road, including this intersection. When Ancient Tree was approved, the county required that a traffic signal be put in at this intersection. It was a requirement of Palm Beach County through the traffic performance standards, which is an approval letter. Any project that we approve, the county has to approve it. This letter goes into our approval and those requirements remain. So not only did they require that, they said it has to go in once warranted. And they gave the authority to be warranted by either the county engineer or the city of Palm Beach Gardens. It's a key word, or. So we have traffic jurisdictional control and the county gave us the authority through the TPS to warrant the signal as well. Our attorney, Max Lohman, reviewed traffic jurisdictional control and issued a determination in February of 2019 that indeed the city did have traffic jurisdictional control of this area, including this intersection. That was recognized in an email from Verdinia Baker to Melissa McKinley, and when she actually stated that the city had gained control of traffic control authority through the annexation of Bay Hill Estates, and that authority has never been given back to the county. Normally what we do is an interlocal agreement where they actually give that authority back to the county. That was never done in this case. In an email back to Virginia from Melissa, she was very upset and asked because the county screwed up if she can do two things. One was to speed up the construction and the improvements along North Lake Boulevard, which we would welcome. We've been wanting those improvements. Avenir has certain conditions that they can't build anymore until those improvements are done. The money's in place. We would love those improvements to go forward. But then she also asked to delay our signal at Bay Hill Estates. She did not want that in until the North Lake improvements are done, which doesn't make any sense because we know what the roadway is going to look like. We've designed it for the ultimate section, so it's not going to interfere whatsoever with the construction. And not only that, it would be safe now, it would be safe during construction, it would be safe after construction. So those two things, and they've, they've held up the construction of North Lake, and they've definitely held up the construction of our city. This just depicts state law. When, it, when a municipality annexes an area, they gain traffic control jurisdiction, unless it's a state road. North Lake Boulevard is not a state road, it's a county-owned road. We conducted a traffic signal once we got funded for the project in May of 2017. That did not meet a traffic warrant. So we continued our efforts looking at the area, and then we conducted a second analysis in September of 2020. That did meet a warrant, and that was based on the manual of traffic control devices, and that is a standard where there's eight warrants that they have, and you try to achieve at least one of those warrants. In this particular case, we achieved two warrants. Those warrants were based on traffic volumes. It's very clear that they were based on traffic volumes. When you have traffic volumes in that excess, it does imply excessive delay or excessive conflict. And again, that word's or. We clearly showed that there's conflict at the intersection, but that doesn't even matter because we met the traffic warrants in the eight hour, which is the warrant one, and the four hour, which is the warrant two. Our code requires us, the city engineer and the city manager, to review a traffic study, which we did, conducted by Pender Troutman, and again, it uses the manual of traffic control devices, which is the standard. So we accepted that, and we issued a determination that the warrant is met, and we should put a traffic signal 
in that intersection. That was submitted to the county in November 2020. In January of this year, the county sent back a letter that the warrant was not met because excessive delays was not met. In February, we wrote back another letter to the county stating that our warrant was not based on excessive delays. It was based on traffic volumes, and traffic volumes alone met the warrant. We got a letter from the county engineer in April of this year where he again stated the warrant is not met because there was not excessive delays. Then our city attorney wrote a letter in April of this year clearly stating that our warrant was not based on excessive delays. It was based on volumes of traffic, which met those two warrants. So where we are in the process right now, we have started issuing an underground permit. The county agreed, graciously agreed, to give us two permits. One is the underground, which is a structural, all the electrical that needs to go in. And then we would receive an above ground where you just set the mast arms, you set the signals, and you, and you put those into use. So in January of 2019, after they said they can issue us a permit in five days, we finally received a permit in August 14th of 2020 for the underground. Once we received that permit, right away we submitted the above ground permit. And on January 27th, we received all satisfaction of any technical requirements of the permit. There's no more comments on that permit, with the exception of one, that three, under three separate occasions that the director of traffic did not approve the city supplied warrant, which through the ancient tree process, we have the authority to warrant the signal. Through us having traffic control jurisdiction, we have the ability to warrant the signal. So that's where we are today. And the county continues to block our efforts to construct this signal. Is there any questions? Um, in the interest of time, if I just wanted to make sure you had the presentation and I'll bring it back up under uh, city manager's report uh, for some additional information so that you can have your discussion then if, if it's okay with you. Are we doing the city manager report first after this or are we doing it at the very end? Yes. No. Yeah. Oh. Public comment first. Okay, yeah. so we should ask our questions then at that time probably so we can all be yes. succinct. Okay. So don't go too far, Todd. All right, perfect. Thank you. We won't be calling you back if we have questions later. Next is comments from the public. I have eight comment cards for items not on the agenda. When your name is called, please come up to the podium and state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Andres Torres. Good evening. My name is Andres Torrens, T-O-R-R-E-N-S, 122 Casa Grande Court, Palm Beach Gardens. I know you have a lot of important matters. This may not be so important, but it's important to us. In December of 2006, my mother-in-law passed away from complications of cancer, and to memorialize her honor, we had a tree planted in her name at Mirasol Park, Plant the Tree Program. In October of 2020, our nephew passed away unexpectedly, and once again, we wanted to honor his life with a live tree. We were hoping to have a beautiful and thriving tree like the one we planted in 2006. We immediately contacted the Department of Parks and requested that a tree be planted, and it was planted in December. From the time the tree was planted, it looked a little dry, but we were reassured by the Department of Parks that it would, it would adjust and continue to thrive. On January 18, 2021, I sent John Gerbs an email with pictures when we noticed that the tree was looking even more dry and brittle, and we were told that, quote, the tree is most likely in shock since it had been planted during a cold snap. They will be monitoring it and making sure that it gets proper water. In March of 2021, when it was clear to us that the tree was not doing well, I once again reached out to the Department of Parks. I received a message from Corey Wilder who informed me that, quote, the tree was either dormant or still adjusting to the new environment due to the lack of rain this time of year. Although our staff has been watering this tree adequately, it is possible that it is still adjusting to its new environment. We would like to continue to monitor the tree until June 1st to give it a chance to fully adapt. Should the tree either re not respond at that point or you are still dissatisfied with this approach, we will happily provide you with a full refund of the tree. 
I must say that I found this response a little insensitive in that we were not looking for a refund for the tree, but simply a live tree like the one we planted in 2006. Although we, asked, we were asked to wait till June 1st, clearly from the pictures you have before you, this tree is not coming back. Please assist us in getting a new tree to honor, to honor my nephew. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll certainly look into the matter and we'll get we'll take care of it. We'll get back to you. Thank you, Andres. Principal Corey Brooks from Dwyer High School. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm not Corey Brooks. Uh, Mr. Brooks couldn't make it tonight. I'm actually uh, head football coach McKinley Roll, uh, representing William T. Dwyer High School. Um, I'm here today because um, we uh, we extremely really need a field. Um, our field is in terrible shape, um, and it affects many student athletes. Uh, myself as an educator, um, student athletes, students they always come first. Um, We've had a number of students that have gotten injured, unfortunately, because of uh, the um, condition of the field. Um, and many student athletes touch that field. Um, soccer, lacrosse, uh, track, football. Um, I mean, you name it, uh, everyone pretty much uses the field. Um, we were actually f uh, featured in a national Under Armour commercial. Um, and unfortunately, they didn't show the field too much. but. Um, you know, that's something, you know, Dwyer High School, we're, no, we're known for um, being a great school as well as being an athletic uh, powerhouse. Um, we re really, uh, we sit in Palm Beach Gardens. Um, even though we're a community school, um, we would love support from the city. Um, and, you know, I'm not sure why um, we've never had a representative in front of you, um, you know, on behalf of the school, but I'm here tonight. Uh, making that request because it will affect so many student athletes um, and students in general. Um, plus, many uh, individuals in Palm Beach County uh, use the facility as well. So, um, you know, that would be, uh, you know, really beneficial for our program, um, for all programs, for every student and athlete at, um, at the high school. Um, so we really thank you and I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa Wade. Hi, how are you? My name is Lisa Wade, 1127 Vintner Boulevard, Palm Beach Gardens. I am a, been here my whole life in Palm Beach Gardens. My son is a student at Dwyer High School, and that's why we're here today, because the field needs to be replaced. Um, He's a junior this year, and when he attended the freshman year, I noticed that the field was a little shaky, but we didn't really say anything. I thought it was the school board, but what the school board has told us is that they don't have the money, and it falls back to funding and fundraising, which we've attempted, but as you know, being a public school, it's kind of hard to get people to donate to you, and especially during COVID, it's kind of hard to get anybody to donate anything to you. So this year, we had our games at Jupiter High School, and I noticed that their field was outstanding and I started asking around and they let us know that the city had paid for their field and then that's why it looked so great and they were so thankful and I was like the city so then when we went to Wellington I noticed that their field was amazing as well and I started asking the parents around how'd you guys get paid for their field as well so I know having grown up in Palm Beach Gardens having played Palm Beach Gardens sports PBGYAA Palm Beach Gardens High School been here my whole life. My dad owned Patty Max down the street for 20 years, so I've been doing this for a long time. I know that you guys want to take care of your schools. I know that you guys want to take care of your kids, your residents, so that's why we're here today to ask you to come look at our facility, come see what we have, and understand that this, this is a representation. This is why people move to Palm Beach Gardens. They move here because of your schools, because of the A ratings, I mean, Jacoby Brissett is a Miami Dolphin. He's a Dwyer graduate. I mean, we bring a lot to the table for Palm Beach Gardens, so we're just asking you to come look at our facilities and help us. All right? Thank you so much for your time. 
Thank you. Um, just to let you know, after speaking with the city manager later again this afternoon, I've been told that Deputy City Manager Stephen Stepp will be contacting you and working okay. with you to see what we can do. All right, we really appreciate it. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Matthew Kamula. Good evening, Madam Mayor. May it please the council. My name is Matthew Camula, and my address is 9678 Osprey Isles Boulevard. I am also the Osprey Isles uh, Homeowners Association president and have been for several years. As a result, I have personal knowledge of the matters to be discussed this evening. I have in attendance with me several homeowners from the Osprey Isles community who are going to lend uh, their support to the city's installation of the traffic light at the intersection of Bay Hill and uh, Ancient Tree. It is our understanding that all of the technical requirements are legal requirements for the installation of this tra traffic signal have been met by the city and the physical dynamics of the intersection itself. I am not here to comment on those technical requirements as I am not a traffic control engineer by trade, nor do I play one on TV. I am here to provide a first-hand account of reality along North Lake Boulevard and the ensuing traffic conditions about which I can speak not only intimately but passionately. I can also tell you about the number of crashes I have seen along North Lake Boulevard, westbound and eastbound, that primarily arise due to the excessive speed of drivers I can tell you that 90 miles an hour is not 55 miles an hour. I can tell you about the time it takes for our residents to make that left-hand turn out of our community. Because I have waited, and waited, and waited, and waited to make that left-hand turn due to the continuous traffic flow from the western communities. I can tell you how my SUV, a 4,000-pound vehicle, rocks back and forth as it is buffeted by the cars speeding by. But be that as it may, we have heard it said that the traffic signal should not be installed at this location because it would mean that the eastern municipalities would literally hold the western uh, uh, communities hostage in their ability to travel east by, it, by its installation. My comment is that situation can be seen as the drivers coming out of communities east of this intersection are currently being held hostage for making simple left-hand turns onto North Lake Boulevard due to the infrequent breaks in traffic. We have also heard it said that the installation of a traffic signal at this location would cause the Western uh, residents to be late for work and could be responsible for losing their jobs. My comment here is something I was taught by my parents and a judge early in my career. If you need to be somewhere on a timely basis, leave 10 or 15 minutes early. That usually solves the problem. As a result, I am here to go ahead and tell you that traffic lights, if it's going to help with the residents making left-hand turns, that's a positive. That's good. If the traffic light slows the speed down to perhaps reduce the number of speed-related accidents, that's a positive, and it will accomplish good. So based on the foregoing, on behalf of my fellow residents of Osprey Isles, we are in favor of the traffic light installation at the intersection of Bay Hill and uh, Ancient Tree. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matthew. Victor Martin. Excuse me for the interruption. Um, we're having a bit of a technical difficulty. We, if you would please uh, recess the meeting for five minutes so we can reboot, please, Madam Mayor. Meeting is recessed. <laughs> I will call, recall Victor Martin to the podium, please. Madam Mayor, Council, uh, I'm Victor Martin. I live at 8896 Oldham Way, Carlton Oaks. I'm the president of the HOA. I 
I've been on the board since 2014. I've been involved with the NCNC since 2017. I'm on that board, so therefore I've been in several meetings regarding this traffic light and the whole situation revolving around it. I'm here tonight to offer that you've got the support of 142 homeowners to move forward and use every avenue you have possible to establish that light. Obviously living there and moving both east and west, as we go down to Royal Palm, Costco down that way, we see the speed, we see the need for the gap, and the volume is um, uh, quite, quite a volume there. And I do also want to extend my thanks to the police department for coming out and um, doing the, through their efforts. It has slowed down. We've really seen it. I mean, I've been out there when 75 miles an hour, you're going backwards, and I'm not being funny. I've seen it out there like that. And still at times or during day, you've got racetracks. Um, so I just, again, offer the support of the entire community to you to take any legal, physical moves, whatever you can do to move this, to go ahead and do it. And um, I think it's just that simple now with this part with the county because we know what's been going back and forth. I'm sure you're aware of, of the going back of what they're saying and countering us and how they're trying to stop this light. So I thank you for your time and your support to put that light. Thank you. Thank you. Gio Muragui. I know I butchered that, I'm sorry. It's okay, you did pretty well. Gio Muragui. I live in A056 Woodsmere Drive in Bay Hill. I'm sorry, can you please speak closer to the microphone? Thank you. I live in A056 Woodsmere Drive, which is in Bay Hill. And I have the same concern that many that came before me. Uh, the light is a, it's just right now is an urgent necessity. And I hope they, uh, you look this as a priority because um, how many accidents we need to have before you get the light. So that's all I want to say. I hope you put Thank all you. the effort. Thank you. Judy Ahrens. Hello, my name is Judy Ahrens. I am also a resident of Bay Hill Estates, 11669 Blackwoods Lane. And um, I myself have witnessed an accident out at Bay Hill, uh, coming out of our community at 8.30 in the morning. Um, and this was a four-car crash uh, due to the uh, conflict uh, situation that um, our, the city engineer, Todd Engel, was speaking about. Uh, there was a non-resident coming left into the community to play golf at, at the golf course, did not see a van coming in that third lane, was hit, that van ended up, the, the, the Corvette spun around, hit another van in this intersection, then the van that hit him hit an SUV sitting in the left lane turning left. And I was next to the SUV. If that van was going any faster, he would have ricocheted off the SUV and probably hit me. Now, by the grace of God, this woman did not have a child in the back seat of her car. And she was sitting still. So um, there are definitely um, you know, serious consequences. And to the complaint, you know, by maybe people from the Western community saying that it, it, it's going to slow them down in the morning. Let me tell you, when there's an accident on North Lake Boulevard, it is gridlock. So that slows them down, and that will cause them to be late, way late in the morning. I mean, there are times when, you know, I will call my husband, and if I generally leave a little bit before he does, um, and I'll say, wait about 30, 40 minutes because there's an accident on North Lake Boulevard or there's an accident right outside of our community. So don't even bother leaving the house yet. Um, so again, I know there's definitely a need. Um, you know, I'm 
I, I know you guys understand and you will do the best that you can to help the communities out west. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Douglas Grant. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. I'm generally happy with the way the city's Can you there. speak I'm, into the oh, microphone, sorry. please, oh, and pardon. state your name and address? Yes, yes, yes. My name is Douglas Grant. I live at 301 Balsam Street. Palm Beach Garden. I'm, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, sir. You'll have to get closer to the okay, microphone. Okay. Thank you. My name is Douglas Grant. I live at 301 Balsam Street. And the problem I'm having is that I have a daycare center across the street from me. I have a daycare center one house over from me. And I have an off-the-books daycare center next to me. And what I'm saying is you need to shut these businesses down. I'm an electrician, I know codes, I know civil codes, I know building codes, and I'm baffled that you would let something like this happen. This is what happens when you shoehorn a high impact, high volume business in a neighborhood. It's everything gone wrong. First, there's a lot of traffic. The traffic comes down fast down the street. I back my car in. The kids are playing and screaming all day in the afternoon, seven days a week. The 304 business, they have loud parties and screaming kids on Saturday night. There is no let up. And so what I'm saying to the city council and the mayor, these businesses need to be shut down. This is what happens when this, you put these businesses in and they just take off. They're, they're entities unto themselves. They're not looking out for the rest of the neighbors. And if you go to ask them something, they're hiding behind, hey, we're taking care of kids. This is a daycare center. so. It's like a bunch of houses living around a playground that's seven days a week. I have a lot of recording of these kids shifting from house to house, yard to yard, and it is bedlam. So I'd like to get this recording to somebody who's in charge and takes care of those kind of things. Okay. And I'm asking you respectfully, these businesses need to be shut down. Um, if you would, Madam Mayor, uh, Mr. Grant. Yes. Uh, I'll get our Deputy City Manager, Steve Stepp, to meet with you right now. If you can give us it. the addresses. Yes. Then we'll, we'll look into the matter and find out what's licensed, what isn't, and we'll take whatever appropriate action that we need to do. I appreciate so, it. I'm getting no peace over there. Okay. So okay. we'll go ahead and get with you now and uh, get the addresses, and then uh, our Deputy City Manager, Steve Stepp, will work with you on that. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the cards we have for tonight. So next is the city manager's report. And I know, Ron, you do have a report. Uh, just very briefly to do uh, an introduction that, again, that we had our meeting last Monday with the residents uh, out in the western section of our, our community who were in much need of some safety out there at that intersection. Uh, and it was uh, a pleasure to have our mayor conduct that meeting for us out there. And I know that you have some comments yourself you'd like to make. So if we would uh, indulge the council, I would like at this time to allow our mayor to make a few comments about the meeting, uh, if that's okay with you. Thank you. So, uh, to backtrack a little bit, the city's been working to have a traffic signal constructed on North Lake Boulevard, where it intersects with Bay Hill Drive and Sand Hill Crane Drive. The project has been fully budgeted by the city for five years now, since 2016. Our residents want the traffic signal as a safety measure to assist them with navigating what we all acknowledge is a dangerous intersection. To date, the city has secured a permit for the installation of the underground utilities to support the signal. However, we continue to struggle with the county to secure a permit for the installation of the signal. So on Monday afternoon, May 3rd, myself, along with city staff and representatives of the western communities of the NCNC, including Ancient Tree, Bay Hill, Bay Hill Preserve, Carlton Oaks, Ibis, Avenir, and Osprey Isles, along with District 1 County Commissioner Maria Marino, came together at Sand Hill Crane Golf Club to discuss the progress of the traffic signal at 
Sand Hill Crane, Ancient Tree Drive, and Bay Hill Drive in North Lake. There were about 50 people in attendance. Natalie Crowley, Director of Planning and Zoning, and Todd Engel, City Engineer, made the same presentation that we saw earlier tonight. The residents of the Western communities were extremely frustrated over the refusal of the county to issue the permit for the installation and are very concerned, as you heard from some of them tonight, about the potential for a tra terrible traffic incident at the intersection before a light is installed. A week ago Friday, I had occasion to be at Sand Hill Crane at two o'clock in the afternoon, and I took a picture while I was coming out. There were six cars in front of me, completely stopped, waiting to make that left-hand turn. After about five minutes, I decided to make the right turn and then make a U-turn. While I was making my U-turn, a construction truck was coming out of Avenir. So the U-turn wasn't a fix, and it also puts more traffic in front of Bay Hill, and that's another component. So it's dangerous for everybody. So at this time, I would like to move the city attorney report up, if everyone's okay with that so that Max can provide some insight into what the city's next steps could be so that we can do our jobs and provide the safety and provide for the safety and well-being of our residents. So we're okay with that? Sure. Thank you, yes. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, and thank you everybody for their input and their, and their presentations and certainly the public comment on this uh, very important issue this evening. Um, yes, sadly, I do have an attorney report for you. I usually don't, thankfully, um, but tonight um, it's kind of unfortunate that I, that I do. And um, before you tonight is a, a resolution, resolution 31-2021, that we're asking to be added to the resolution, and I'm asking for action on tonight. And this resolution will do uh, a few things for us. Um, one of the things that it will do is, uh, well, let me just start over. Back in uh, April, in April 14th, after we got in receipt to the, of the April 7th letter from uh, County Engineer David Ricks um, denying our permit, uh, our right-of-way permit yet again, even though we have the authority to warrant the light both under state law, Chapter 316, as well as through the TPS letter, which is just superfluous. It's unnecessary. We don't need it. We have, a, we have original traffic jurisdiction already as a matter of law. Um, I propounded a, I responded to that letter um, on April 14th, and I propounded a public records request, a request for public records uh, contemporaneously with that. I copied Mr. Ricks as well as Virginia Baker and the county attorney Denise Neiman uh, on that, res on that uh, request for public records. And in that request, I requested uh, a fair amount of information. It wasn't particularly voluminous in my opinion, but the most important thing that I requested were the, the traffic warrant analysis for, for nine lights that we suspect were installed without traffic warrants. Um, two days later, I would submit to you questionably in violation of Chapter 119, they uh, responded to me in the afternoon um, letting me know that yes, they had received my public records request uh, on behalf of the city and that it would take 20 business days to respond to the request. To which I responded, um, again copying the same individuals, including Ms. Neiman, um, letting them know, know that um, that's an arbitrary and capricious response that they didn't provide any basis for such, a, for such a broad time estimation. I know it certainly wouldn't take us that long to produce that information. Um, and then I sent them a subsequent email um, detailing a few uh, salient, points, salient points from a few cases um, that are on point as it relates to public records to point out to them that their arbitrary uh, 20 days to respond to the public records request didn't comport with the law. Under the law, they're required to respond in a reasonable amount of time based upon the records um, requested. And in that second response, I said, and oh, by the way, to make it easier for you, um, you can give me item number five first, which was the nine traffic warrant, the nine warrant analyses for those uh, nine traffic signals, which we would literally be able to go here for any traffic signal that we've warranted or that's been put up in our city and go, if we have a traffic study for it, we'd be able to go put our hands on it in a matter of minutes. We just go to the file and get it. Um, I had got no response from that whatsoever. So last Thursday, in accordance with Chapter 119, Section .12, I sent them a yet another notice uh, letting them know that if they didn't respond to our public records and our request in accordance with the law and compel with the requirements of Chapter 119, that the city would avail itself of all remedies available to it. Um, 
And I did that because under 119.12, you, you have to provide that five days notice under the law to preserve your right to pursue attorney's fees if you have to litigate over uh, requiring somebody to compel with uh, the, the public records law. So um, today was day five. Um, I have yet to get a response. Um, we've gotten nothing but crickets. Um, no sound from them, no response, no email, no hey, we're working on it, nothing. So what I'm asking for you tonight um, is authorization to file the necessary uh, lawsuits to compel the, the county to, to comply with the public records law. Um, it's particularly abhorrent what they're doing. Um, th it's, uh, it's unbelievable to me that another government would um, slow roll a response to a public records request. Um, we certainly don't do it. That's part of my job here is to make sure we don't do it. And um, our staff isn't inclined to do it, but I work very closely with our clerk and all of our staff and our city manager to make sure that we are responding to requests for public record in a proper, prompt fashion in accordance with the law. Even when um, the records, some, uh, very rarely, but occasionally they're not particularly flattering. And we still make sure that we do it because the, the, uh, the Florida legislature has established uh, an absolute right to those public records, save only a few confidential records and certain exemptions. We have one of the most liberal public records law in the country. <clears throat> so the reason I put that in the form of a resolution is to, while I believe that under the law we wouldn't have to go through a Chapter 164 alternative intergovernmental alternative dispute resolution process, I wanted to put it in the resolution and have the declaration made by the council that uh, there are significant government interests in stake and even the public health, safety, and welfare issues at stake so that we would be able to avoid going through the Chapter 164 proceeding. It's really um, a, a prophylactic measure, if you will, um, just to make sure that they don't try to raise that um, and resist giving us the records because I suspect they don't have them uh, and they don't want to tell me they don't have them. Uh, and I'm going to need a judge to tell them that they have to give me an answer one way or the other on behalf of the city. The other portion of it <clears throat> which is absolutely going to be required, is uh, the determination that there are significant government interests and public health, health safety welfare issues at, uh, at stake so we can avoid, again, going through the lengthy nine-month um, alternative dispute resolution process that most of you are familiar with. We went through on mobility, uh, sadly, to no avail. Um, again, so we can avoid that process and immediately file the lawsuit to compel them to issue our permit. The permit, this right-of-way permit, once we satisfied the warrant, the issuance of that right-of-way permit is ministerial. The city, no, there's no longer, we've not received any more technical comments from the county. The city, um, our staff, our city engineer, and our contractors, they have, su they have supplied them with all the proper information. There's no longer any technical um, compliance issues. They don't have the discretion to refuse to issue the permit at that point, and they are inappropriately and, in my opinion, illegally exercising bureaucratic muscles to our detriment. Their motivations I could speculate on, but I'll leave that for the rest of you to do. Um, but what they're doing, in my opinion, is a blatant violation of the law and an abuse of their power. And I need the I would need um, at least a supermajority vote. I'm hoping for a unanimous vote on passing the resolution uh, to authorize me to file the necessary legal actions to compel them to comply with the law. Um, you've heard m um, people that are way more informed than I am as it relates to the technical issues about the public safety issue facing our residents, as well as the county residents out there, um, due to the absence of this signal. And it's a long time, in my opinion, that uh, the county quit abusing its authority and start working with the governments that uh, are in the county rather than trying to abuse us. Um, the other portion of it is to direct the city manager to uh, um, take uh, an, the uh, steps necessary to expedite the installation um, um, so that we can move forward um, as best we can. That way, when we uh, prevail, we get our permit. We don't have any roadblocks at all. But that's that's what we're asking for tonight in the resolution. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Would our own traffic officer like to start? Nope. Mm -hmm. But. Um, I was kind of hoping we were going to roll this into more of a conversation because um, we need Todd back up anyway. Where'd he go? Okay. And Max will be ready. I'll start. 
I'll go for it. So first off, I want to t talk to our residences that are here. Thank you for coming and thank you for voicing your opinion on what's going on in North Lake. Um, just like the mayor said, I was a traffic cop here for most of my adult life. I know all about North Lake. Marcy, although new on the council, to, new to this council, is not new to being a city council member. She's familiar with the traffic on North Lake. We've been ingrained into this situation with traffic on North Lake for a long time. So we know everything that you guys are hearing now. Um, so we would like you to go back to your community and tell everybody on the planet that your city council, who we just get voted in by you, supports getting, and you'll see, um, I'm not speaking for my other four, but um, supports traffic control, saving lives, cutting down on injuries, and making our community as best as possible. And the reason why I say that, one of the reasons why all of you individually voted to be annexed by the city of Palm Beach Gardens is because you want to be in a better place. Palm Beach Gardens does better with our residences than the county does better with the entire county. Now, this is a political issue. We battle with them on mobility issues, which is other traffic stuff that we're gonna end up in court over that too. So what they don't wanna do is play nice and they're playing poker with the safety of the people that drive on North Lake Boulevard. And they're gonna lose, because we're gonna bring them to court. So Todd, I have a question. You brought up traffic control jurisdiction. I don't know if this is a legal question or something that you can define. So if traffic control jurisdiction is actually a, comes under the state statute, and if we have traffic control jurisdiction on the roadway, is not a traffic control device, such as a signal, part of traffic control jurisdiction? That's correct. And okay, so that, I mean. Yeah, yes. So, the uh, issue is it goes on county property. We're putting the signal itself on county property. So we're trying to obtain a right-of-way permit. But the only thing about that, they won't issue it because they don't agree with the signal or the warrant. Yeah, that's correct. We don't need their authority to warrant the like. We have original traffic jurisdiction under Chapter 3. It's 316.006 through .008 of the Florida statutes. We never relinquished traffic control jurisdiction through an interlocal agreement uh, after the annexation of Bay Hill. Uh, and so we have that portion of North Lake. And what Todd is saying is absolutely correct. They are merely the reviewing agency to make sure that we are meeting the technical, basically building code requirements, if you will, for the installation of that signal because they own the right of way. <clears throat> but they do not have a right to deny that permit in an arbitrary and capricious fashion as they're doing. So the only thing we can really do is play this out as it goes. The, the council's gonna support it. We haven't voted on it yet, but the council's gonna support it, it's obvious. And um, that's why they call them traffic control, because we need to control the traffic in order to help traffic slow down so people don't get injured. And motor cops can't do it just by issuing tickets. I was a motor cop here for 10 years, or between whatever, Jupiter and here for 10 years. But, you know, it's crazy what you got to go through. You got someone 45, 50 miles an hour, and you got someone going 70, 75, and you got a motor cop zooming through traffic at 80, 85. It's not the solution. The traffic control device, which there will be many up and down North Lake Boulevard when Avenir gets going, will help slow the traffic. And, um, you know, so I really only didn't have much of any questions other than the traffic control jurisdiction. It's just a statement that you guys got our, my support. And we'll get it done because that's what we're, you know, that's what we're supposed to do. So thanks, Mayor. Well, um, you're sitting on this council for four years, uh, you know, you kind of get a feel for what everybody wants and needs. And we rem remind ourselves every day that we're residents just like the rest of you. Um, this is one of those things that drives people nuts about government, myself included. I mean, you have a situation uh, here where the, the studies will show and have shown the need. But not only that, if you just look around and you see the future, you have to put a little bit of common sense behind what you're doing and why. 
And, and I think this is why people look at government and say, well, why? What, what seems to be the problem? It's common sense that we need a light. Now, you're not talking about putting something on you know, a, an intersection in the middle of town where there's no new construction, there's no new developments coming along, and now we're in the future. So if a traffic study doesn't support a light down the street on a military trail, that might make sense because there's no new construction around here. But you're looking at an area that, even though the traffic study does warrant it, even if you're questioning it a little bit, just, just use a little bit of common sense and say, yes, this is something that needs to happen. So why do we have to sit and play these games? You know, we have allowed the city manager and attorney and staff to, to work with the county staff. Um, I don't always agree with, with everything that uh, we do, and we have a lot of conversations in the back, but I 1,000% agree with our city attorney and manager that we can't sit back and wait any longer. The council, we've, we've, we know the county commissioners and they're all friends of mine and, and I respect all of them and I know they're trying to do the right thing. Uh, and this isn't a knock on them. This is really just to say, okay, we've tried to do it the right way. We've listened to the business community, the residents to say, just sit down and work it out. And after a while, when you sit down and work it out, there is no working out, then you have to step back and say, well, what are we wasting our time for? Um, and, and here we are, and I think it's time to, to go to the next step, listen to our residents, listen to not only our residents, but listen to the people that live beyond it. Listen to the residents, the guests, the, the visitors, um, the people that come and visit those of you that live in these communities, and the people that live further west in the acreage and beyond, and listen, and just watch. Uh, we're not gonna wait for people to die just because a traffic study doesn't warrant it. And I don't think anybody here is going to want to. I don't particularly like the way this process is going. It's not my choice. But, you know, there comes a point when you have to say enough's enough. And, and I want to thank you guys for, for doing it uh, and pushing it. Um, you, you can't always get what you want. You can't always, you know, have people sit down and agree with you. But here we are, and it's time to take the next step to make sure that our residents are protected. So uh, I'm going to support this 1,000%. Chelsea? thousand percent and a half without a doubt and before I was even elected this is something that was brought to me as just a candidate this has been going on way too long it's unacceptable and safety is supposed to be the priority for us and for our city staff and if we're not able to go forward with the county allowing us to do so this I'm just the more and more I've heard about this tonight the more upset I've gotten and I, I thought I knew a good amount about this and I have with me several emails from residents who've been reaching out to me for almost two years about this. And I'm not going to read them all because they were all echoed tonight by the residents who came, thank you. And what? we need to protect our public health and safety and our residents no matter what. I've lived here my whole life and people, you know, make fun of Florida sometimes. Let's not have that happen this time. Let's be smart about it. Let's take the opportunity to not make the mistake that's right there waiting every morning and every evening. And it, it's lethal and it needs to be fixed. And so I'm very, very proud of our city, our city manager and our city attorney from, for sticking up for our residents. And I really appreciate your hard work and efforts. Thank you. Marcy. <clears throat> Thank you. And you're all correct. This is not a new issue. When I was on the council back five years ago and we were annexing um, Osprey Isles and we had a meeting in our EOC. Uh, Matthew was there and uh, a lot of other residents were there and they were wholeheartedly in support of the annexation asking a lot of questions but their concerns were this exact issue is the traffic on North Lake, the turn lanes and uh, the uh, can we get traffic to slow down? Can we put up a signal? What can we do? And I cannot believe that we're sitting here almost five years, maybe it's more than five years later, still talking about the same issue. So to uh, Carl and, and Mark's point, you know, sometimes government can't get it, you know, gets in their own way. And in this case, we're trying to work together to solve an issue. Um, you know, our job is to represent uh, our residents and obviously the health, safety, and welfare of our residents is my number one concern and I know all of your number one concern. We have a, a licensed professional engineer that wrote a report that says the traffic uh, signal is warranted. We have our own professional engineer that has reviewed it and, and corroborates and is urging us to, to 
do this and agrees with the traffic engineer. We have our police uh, that have been out there for years, and they're saying that uh, North Lake, um, you know, the, the people driving on North Lake at a high rate of speed, above and beyond uh, the speed limit, and it's not, uh, you know, it's getting a little better, but it's not getting very, very much better. Um, Ancient Tree still has another third of the development to be built, so that's going to add even more people turning left on that crazy intersection that I was a nervous wreck watching. I can't believe the people that are actually in there um, trying to turn left or even right at this point with all the lanes going, whatever, 60 to 90 miles per hour from what we heard. Um, you know, it's not to our detriment, as Max said, it's to the detriment of the residents, actually. Um, I, I don't mean to... To, to say something different from what you said, but in my opinion, it's the detriment of the residents. And you know, I hope it doesn't come to a lawsuit. I really don't. I really hope that the uh, county will come and, and say something. I read the, the reports, and I've read traffic reports for years, more years than I want to say, but I'm not willing to wait um, you know, until a fatality occurs at, at all. I, I'd like to do it right now because who in their right mind would want to wait for somebody to get hurt, yet alone die? Um, that's not, that's not you know, what we're here to do. We're here to help people, not to, you know, to, to wait. Let's just wait. That's just, uh, um, it, I can't even believe that that's something that they said. So um, with all that, uh, I really feel it is warranted. I, I appreciate all of the effort that everyone put forth to bring this to our attention, and I thank the residents for being so patient. I can't believe that you've been this patient. So um, with that said, I, I approve it as well. Thank you, Marcy. Um, legal action is never to be taken lightly, uh, particularly by a municipality, but we are in an extremely unsafe position at the intersection of Bay Hill Drive, Ancient Tree, and North Lake without that traffic signal. Um, and growth out there is just starting. The resolution lists on four pages the numbers of, of residences and developments and businesses that are scheduled are on the books to be moving out that way. Not all in Palm Beach Gardens, but they will all make their mark on North Lake. The city has applied for all required permits in accordance with the applicable rules, regulations, and procedures of the county. We have documentation from the county. The signal warrant has met full compliance with the MUTCD based on a warrant study, as Marcy said, by a licensed professional traffic engineer. All we need for the county to do is their job and permit the signal. That's all they're required to do. We're trying to do our job and protect our residents. So I'm in full support of the resolution and taking the next steps necessary for the safety of our residents as well. Madam Mayor, can I make one last comment? I mean, it's very easy for us to sit up here in front of a very friendly crowd, but I can tell you every one of us would be happy to go to any community, any county commission meeting and state the same thing to people that may not fully understand it. So uh, we're all going to be supporting this uh, at any venue that we need to do. Well, Rochelle was going to add something. Well, Rochelle will do it, right. <laughs> I was going to add a uh, yeah. spinoff of you. So I don't know who went to the county commission meetings. I heard some people in the community went to the county commission meeting and under items for public uh, discussion where you're not allowed to engage conversation with the commissioner or us. It's just how it's done. So when you go next time, and if a whole bunch of you want to go, they got to hear every single one of you. And you ask them to their face, why aren't you giving Palm Beach Gardens a simple permit, permit to help cut down in the traffic crashes and the injuries that are going to occur in our, on North Lake Boulevard? North Lake Boulevard's probably just as busy or somewhat busier than Military Trail right here in front of City Hall. From PGA to North Lake Boulevard, there's probably four signals because it controls the traffic. So if you, next time you guys go, stand at that podium and go, I want to look at every one of them and go, I want to know why you are not supporting because they do have the authority to tell Virginia Baker to issue the permit. Issue the permit. It's that simple. So it's politics between gardens and the county because we have a lot going on that 
intermingles beyond this topic. So they want to play politics with it. So don't let them. I know we know we have Maria's support. We can all speak for Maria. So if you guys care to get an army together, go do it. Ask them right to their face. We don't have to speak for Maria. She gave right. her support publicly at the meeting on Monday night. She's the lone wolf right now on this. So, um, well, I guess I need a actually, uh, Madam Mayor, if I may, yes. it would be appropriate this time uh, to have the clerk oh, read the resolution read the title. by title. Patty, would you read the title, please? Resolution 31, 2021, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, adopted pursuant to Section 164.10412 Florida Statutes, finding that the absence of a traffic signal at the intersection of North Lake Boulevard and Stonewall Drive, Bay Hill Drive, Sand Hill Crane Drive constitutes an immediate threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the public, which requires immediate action and further finding that significant legal rights will be compromised if a court proceeding does not take place before the provisions of the Florida Governmental Conflict Resolution Act. Sections 1.64, 164.101 through 164.1061 Florida statutes are complied with, further finding that Palm Beach County's refusal to timely comply with the requirements of Chapter 119 Florida statutes, the public records law, will compromise significant legal rights if a court proceeding does not take place before the provisions of the Florida Governmental Conflict Resolution Act. Sections 164.101 through 164.1061 Florida statutes are complied with. To the city's request for public records related to certain traffic signal installations providing an effective date for other purposes. Okay, so at this time, I will need a first and a second to approve resolution 31 2021. Mayor, I'll make the motion to approve resolution 31 2021, please. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is approved 5 0. Thank you very much. And just to let you know, um, the, uh, the, the complaint for the public records is drafted and will be filed and served tomorrow. I expect to have the second complaint drafted and filed before the end of the week next week. Now, they have 20, after they're served, they have 20 days, or is it different because it's a government summons? Well, they, they would normally get 20 days um, because I'm not suing them for damages, so 768.28 doesn't apply, um, but it, it, the public records is an emergency filing, so um, I'll be filing that, and then we should get an expedited hearing. They may or may not shorten their time to, uh, to reply. It just depends on what the judge does when it gets assigned. So possibly by the next meeting, we might have some answers? I'm hopeful. Okay, cool. I'm into that. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Hopefully it's not raining. Next is the consent agenda, and I am going to pull D and W. I'd like to pull P. And Chelsea wants to pull P. So I will need, anyone else want to pull? No, but I'll be happy to make the motion to accept uh, the consent agenda minus D, P, and W. Right. Okay. All right. So, with respect. You need to call the question, Madam Mayor. Oh, I need to call the yep. question. Um, Just on the consent agenda with uh, minus those three items. Oh, okay. Uh, Just I need, all in favor. Oh, all in favor. Aye. 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 So, all right, so as far as D goes, are we, we're not up on our screen, right? We not don't yet. have. We're restarting again right now. We, we, okay, so I'll start and hopefully we'll come up in a minute. But the good news is it stopped raining in our chambers. <laughs> yes, it did stop raining in the chambers. That's a good sign. Um, so one of the many departments that make Palm Beach Gardens the signature city that it is and the best place in the state to raise a family is our Parks and Recreation Department. It's not just the diversity of what we offer in programming and our top-notch facilities, but the inclusion of all families and children that makes us special. In February, the City Council and staff attended the opening day ceremonies of our new Miracle League Field, and we unveiled a beautiful statue, 
that pays tribute to the special kids, families, and buddies that will be able to play there. On tonight's consent agenda is the funding for a new special needs playground on the adjacent empty lot west of the Miracle League playing field. And I want to thank our Parks and Rec Department, the city manager, and our staff for their forward inclusive thinking and their big hearts. And I thought it appropriate that we actually see what this is going to look like and um, everyone can know what we're going to do out there. Good evening, City Council. For the record, Kumra, Purchasing and Contracts Director. And this project is to furnish and install a playground at the Miracle League playing field, at least on the empty lot to the west. Um, this is the empty lot to the west that was years ago was like a Browns field and is currently used as a temporary storage area and a, and a temporary staging area for work done at Gardens Park. Um, the vendor has done previous work for the city. And we've had no issue with that vendor. The work should take about 90 days after we issue the purchase order as a notice to proceed. And the playground will be accessible to special needs children served by the Miracle League, playing the Miracle League of Palm Beach County and I mean other people who may not be special needs children. Uh, we're piggybacking a contract from Clay County and this saves us administration time. It saves us also because we get volume discounts by piggybacking a larger entity's contract. The city gets also a manufacturer's discount specific to this contract, and the funding for this purchase is already approved in the Community Services Department's budget. Now I have some pretty pictures to show you, so you can look at. This is the site plan that shows the orientation of the playground. Of course, the surface will be synthetic so that if children fall, they won't injure themselves. And that's what it look like. Um, you have any questions? If I may, Charlotte, do you have anything to add for? Charlotte Przenski, Leisure Services Administrator. One thing I would like to add, um, one name was not mentioned. Um, Todd Engel has um, really worked very hard on this and has brought a lot of this life along with David Reyes. Um, he's not here, so just to mention that. But the Miracle League, I, I can't tell you, we're all there. They are so grateful at how this city has stepped up to serve their program. They were looking for North County location, uh, met with uh, Daniel Prieto and Lindsay Marsh, worked it all out and through those gentlemen and their work, it, it's just come to be an amazing thing and um, our mayor hit it right on the nose. We, we serve all people. We're such an amazing community and this project just keeps enhancing that. So thank you. Thank you, Todd and David. One other um, project note to add. <clears throat> I spoke to Corey, our Director of Public Services today and he said that Funding will be in the budget next year to add shelters, to add some shelters for the kids so they can sit on it. Uh, covers for it. Thank you. So, so two questions on that. One, is it going to leak? Uh, and, uh, and second question, Todd, did you personally try out all of these uh, different things on the playground as city engineers? Yeah, okay. So how long does it take to, to get that installed Yeah, when they start? Um, 90 days. From tomorrow? From the issue the purchase order, which we'll probably do next week. Awesome. Thank yeah. you, Kumra. Thank you, Kumra. Do we approve each one separately or? Okay, so then I need a motion and a second to approve number D. I'll make a motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. P, Chelsea? Yes, I'm polling P, which is the Proclamation for Mental Health Awareness and Trauma-Informed Care Month. Mostly 
more than ever because of COVID, but I'm proud that the city has decided to recognize Mental Health Awareness and Trauma-Informed Care Month for May and to support behavioral health care all year long, not just for the month of May. Some quick statistics, one in five adults experience a mental condition each year. Suicide is the second leading cause of death among people aged 10 to 34. And now with the COVID pandemic, there's been a profound impact on mental health for people of all ages. So now more than ever, it's critical to reduce the stigma around mental health, mental health struggles, and because that stigma is more prevalent than ever before, and we don't wanna keep anyone from seeking help. Um, I do have one special request. The gentleman who spoke earlier, his name is Andres Torres. He's a clinical development, excuse me, the clinical director for Families First Palm Beach County. He's very passionate about this as well as the tree. We appreciate both. And he's asked if council would be so kind as to take a photograph with him for Mental Health Month. Is that okay? Sure. Um, mind with me? To take a photograph? Sure. Yeah. Do you mind? Good. Indulge. We will we don't have a copy of it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We'll go from the park to the intersection. We didn't vote on that yet, right? Okay. Um, I need a, a first and a second to pass Chelsea. resolution D. A P. Chelsea. Yeah. I, can motion, I make a motion for that you pass proclamation for Mental Health Awareness and Trauma-Informed Care Month, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now for W. So this is the 52nd Annual Professional Municipal Clerks Week. And we would like to honor our very special clerk, Patty Snyder, for always being there for all of us, no matter what the asking is or when, with a smile. Or how many elections we how many elections we have? <laughs> yes, or how many <laughs> elections we have? She, she, definitely, I hear from people from other cities, and they're like, "I missed this and I missed that." And I was like, "Oh well, I didn't I miss it. I, knew I don't know how you I, guys, I don't doing. know how she treats you guys, but she's all over me all the time. Mean. She's kind of mean. That's an old mean. Hey, hey. So. <laughs> so um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you get I will you get. <laughs> quickly read the proclamation for Municipal Clerks Week. Whereas the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk, a time-honored and vital part of local government, exists throughout the world, and whereas the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk is the oldest among public servants, that doesn't mean you're the oldest, Patty, and whereas the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk provides the professional link between the citizens, the local governing bodies, and agencies of government at other levels, and whereas professional municipal clerks have pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality, rendering equal service to all, and whereas the professional municipal clerk serves as the information center on functions of local government and community, and whereas professional municipal clerks continually strive to improve the administration of the affairs of the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk through participation in education programs, seminars, workshops, and the annual meetings of their state, provincial, county, and international professional organizations, and 
whereas it is most appropriate that we recognize the accomplishments of the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk, I, Rochelle A. Litt, Mayor of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, do hereby proclaim the week of May 2nd, 2021 through May 8th, 2021 as Professional Municipal Clerks Week in the City of Palm Beach Gardens and further extend appreciation to our professional certified municipal clerk, Patricia Snyder, and to all professional municipal clerks for the vital services they perform and their exemplary dedication to the communities they represent. And we have a little something. This is from us to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was almost as long as Mayor Javelin's talk that one time about all the different things that he thought you were so special about, but Marcy <laughs> was there for that, sure. Thank you all very, very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. So I will need a motion and a second to approve W. I would love to make a motion to approve. I'm going to second it because I'm her favorite. <laughs> <laughs> what? She's, a, she's impartial. It said it in the thing. She's impartial. I'm probably your favorite one to pick on, probably. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Patty. Thank you all very much. Okay, so. Now we go on to this next. Um, tonight we are... Tonight we are holding quasi-judicial hearings on the following case. Resolution 26-2021, Planned Unit Development, PUD. This means that the City Council is required by law to base its decision on the evidence contained in the record of this proceeding, which consists of the testimony at the hearing, the materials which are in the official city file on this application, and any documents presented during this hearing. The council is also required by law to allow cross-examination of any witnesses who testify tonight. Cross-examination may occur after the staff, the applicant, and other participants have made their presentations and will be permitted in the order of the witness's appearance. It is necessary that anyone who testifies at the hearing remain until the conclusion of the hearing in order to be able to respond to any questions. If you plan to testify this evening or wish to offer written comments, please fill out a card and give it to the city clerk. The city clerk will now swear in all persons who intend to offer testimony this evening on any of these cases. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. Next, we have public hearings. Clerk, could you please read the title of Ordinance 4? Ordinance 4, 2021, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, amending the City of Palm Beach Gardens budget for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2020, and ending September 30, 2021, inclusive, providing a conflicts clause, a severability clause, and authority to codify, providing an effective date for other purposes. And open the hearing. Has anything changed since the first reading? Uh, no, Madam Mayor, there have been no changes since first reading. Does anyone need another presentation? Nope. Okay, I'm going to close the hearing. Can I get a motion and a second to approve? I'll make a motion to pass Ordinance 4 2021 on second reading. I'll make a second. Bringing it back for discussion. Any discussion? Nope. Hearing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5 0. Okay, I'm looking for the next page. Okay. 
Patty, would you read the title for Ordinance 5, please? Ordinance 5, 2021, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, annexing pursuant to a petition for voluntary annexation a parcel of real property comprising a total of 0 0.13 acres, more or less, located on the north side of Bomar Drive, approximately 400 feet west of the intersection of US-1 and Bomar Drive in Palm Beach County, Florida. That is more particularly described herein, declaring that the voluntary annexation petition bears a signature of the owner of the real property annexed hereby, amending Article 2 of the City Charter by redefining the corporate limits, providing for transmittal to the Florida Department of State, the Palm Beach County Court of Clerks, and Palm Beach County providing a conflicts clause, a severability clause, and authority to codify, providing an effective date and for other purposes. And open the hearing, staff presentation. Welcome, Martin. Good evening, Madam Mayor, council members. For the record, my name is Martin Pitts with the Planning and Zoning Department. <clears throat> and tonight, I'm presenting a voluntary annexation request for one parcel, totaling approximately 0.13 acres, uh, it's located on the north side of Bomar Drive, um, on approximately 400 feet west of US-1. For those of you that aren't familiar, uh, <clears throat> the parcel is, uh, as you can see, it's on the north side of Bomar Drive, which is just immediately past what we refer to as the Bomar annexation, or Bomar addition off of PGA Boulevard. This is directly across from City Center. <clears throat> Now this site is owned uh, by Sheila Shaw, MD, uh, PLLC, which is uh, the Sheila and Raj Shaw, and it's currently used as a single family dwelling unit. No changes to the use are being proposed with this annexation. Uh, we, when a par parcel comes into the city uh, for annexation, the city reviews the annexation request um, uh, to make sure that it's consistent with Florida uh, statutes, specifically Chapter 171. Uh, this parcel is within uh, the annexation area of interest 21 that was contained within the city's uh, 2016 study. And the annexation does meet the city's level of service standards uh, for annexation. The site has been duly noticed, uh, both with postings and mailers and <clears throat> newspaper advertising. A notice has been sent to the county uh, planning director and the county administrator. At this time, we have not received any uh, comments from the county. The property is not within the unincorporated protection area, so no further action is required by the county. This was heard before, by the Planning and Zoning and Appeals Board at their last meeting, and it was recommended approval by a unanimous vote of seven to zero. Staff is recommending approval of Ordinance 5, 2021 on first reading as presented, and staff and the property owners are uh, available if you have any questions. Okay, I do not have any comment cards on this, so um, I'm gonna close the hearing. Can I get a motion and a second to approve? I would love to make a motion because I'm very excited about annexation in our city and I'd love to square off the boundary. So yes, motion to approve. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? I know Mr. Shaw was here earlier. But yeah, I want to talk. He's, he's still, he's hidden behind. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for your patience tonight. And his wife is over uh, there we go. <laughs> Can you bring up the picture again, please? So I want to know why. Why, why the, the size of this room? Why does, why does he want to be annexed into the city? And I don't, I, I'm all for it anyway, but I just really want to know. We probably would like to take over all that area, but um, what's the reason? Since it's not being given to us, I'm going to ask for it. Yeah, well, because our police and our fire are going to have to respond to this area now, which prop may, you know, maybe, but um, I just want to ask you why, because I'm curious. I mean, you know, maybe you'll be the start of the domino effect and we'll take over all that area. So uh, it's just curious. I'm sure we all like to know. Sure. 
You Hi, can take your mask off. Yeah. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council Members. The reason why I'm doing it because we own that property for last three or four years, and I live in Palm Beach Gardens. I live in a steeplechase community here, and I do everything in Palm Beach Gardens. I've got some businesses in Palm Beach Gardens. I live in Palm Beach Gardens, and it is much easier to deal for any new thing, any permit, anything that is there in gardens than any other part of the Palm Beach County because I own approximately 60 properties in this county. And you're going to put you all those are, in Palm Beach Gardens too? I'm sorry? <laughs> Are your other 59 properties you're going to... They are, they are in Lake Worth. You want, them in in you want them in Palm Beach Gardens? <laughs> I live in Palm Beach. It'll go better, I swear, especially Lake Worth. <laughs> it definitely would. And you guys do excellent job. I must say that we have been super happy here. We have been... We moved from... We used to live in Ibis. And uh, then we moved to uh, Steeplechase community. We are very happy. And I would want to do any business or anything with gardens than anywhere else. So when I look at this, sir, yes, my first thought was, I mean, that area is surrounded by a county pocket. US-1, they put the apartments up there. My first thought was, is you just want to be in Palm Beach Gardens. Even before I, was, I decided to speak on the matter, I'm like, what? This guy just wants to be in the gardens. So I appreciate your honesty. I'm going to I'll obviously support it. So thank you. Welcome to Palm Beach Gardens again. Thank do you we, very thank much. Thank you. And you should Patty, sell the rest of rest of your properties and, and just buy more in Palm Beach Gardens. <laughs> yeah, why do you have stuff in Lake Worth when you can buy stuff up here? Yeah. That's true. Just, uh, do we need name and address for the record on this one? Oh, yes. Um, he's, the he's the applicant. He's the applicant. Yeah. So it's, it's okay. Do you have any plans for that property or just it's just a rental home it rental? Is, right now, the surrounding part is commercial. So a couple of our friends that who are therapists, they say, well, I want a small office for myself. But right now, I'm just going to convert it to Palm Beach Gardens and keep it right now. There is no short-term plan yet. Okay. okay. You have a motion and a vote? So a I have a motion. Thank you very much. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your patience tonight. Okay. Will the clerk read Resolution 26? This is a quasi-judicial hearing. Resolution 26, 2021, Resolution of the City Council of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, approving a plan unit development PUD plan amendment and major conditional use to allow an automated express car wash facility on 1.54 acres located on the north side of North Lake Boulevard, approximately 200 feet west of Sunrise Drive, is more particularly described herein, providing waivers, providing conditions of approval, providing an effective date for the purposes. Going to open the hearing. Are there any ex partes on this? Any ex partes? No ex partes. Mr. Hearing. Well, good evening, uh, Madam Mayor. For the record, uh, Donaldson Hearing here tonight on behalf of National Express Car Wash. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. It's a fun night to uh, be here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, with me tonight is uh, Dave Millage uh, with our office, as well as my partner in crime, Mr. Brian Seymour, with the uh, law firm of Gunster. No crimes. No crimes, of course, just uh, a fun. Uh, we're here tonight uh, requesting a uh, PUD amendment and a conditional use approval for an express car wash located on a acre and a half site located here in the city of Palm Beach Gardens. Uh, have lots of green space and open space to show you. The, height, the site historically was, uh, was approved by a, 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 a for a regions bank with the five drive-throughs back in around 2010. Uh, and uh, we're moving forward with our request today. But I do point out it was 30 years ago that you all were, had the foresight to understand the importance of mobility in the city to obtain an easement to connect Roan Lane and Sunrise. And you continue to do those same things to, uh, today. So uh, the site is located just east of, uh, of Interstate I-95 on the north side of uh, uh, North Lake Boulevard. It's west of Sunrise and east of uh, Roan Lane. It abuts an unimportant, uh, unincorporated area of Palm Beach County to uh, the north. Uh, this is a, a, a duplex uh, community consisting of renters and homeowners. Uh, we did have the opportunity to conduct a, a Zoom meeting 
uh, with, uh, with the residents uh, to the north. We did have two people attend, although we notified everybody uh, in, the, in the neighborhood. Had a wonderful discussion, and uh, uh, they uh, were excited about the project, and they had a few uh, concerns that they did bring up about uh, kind of some noise with people speeding on that street, and uh, also uh, with the car dealerships unloading their 16-wheelers uh, of new cars uh, right there on that, uh, on that way. And, and they were pleased to see with the improvements that would be made by way of this project, they'd have additional protection from the noise, and the roadway would be, would be improved, and there'd better be more of an opportunity for it to be patrolled uh, by the city of Palm Beach Gardens. Just the surrounding area, McDonald's is to the east, the Edwin uh, Watts uh, Golf Store to the west. We understand that's one of the most successful uh, uh, in, their, uh, in their chain. They're here in the city of golf, the city of Palm Beach Gardens. The uh, zoning of the site is CG1. To the north in the, in the yellow there is the unincorporated area of Palm Beach County, which is uh, uh, a medium density uh, residential area. Uh, this is our, our proposed site plan. Now, hopefully the one thing that stands out to you is the amount of green that we have uh, on this plan, uh, close to 30% uh, uh, green space, substantially more than what's required by code. It also, we'll emphasize as we talk about the presentation, uh, the uh, uh, efforts that we've been working, worked on with staff for mobility, creating a much better experience on North Lake Boulevard for pedestrians along North Lake Boulevard, as well as nice wide pedestrian sidewalks uh, entering, uh, entering the site. Just kind of zooming in uh, a little bit, the uh, proposed car wash is relatively small in size. It's about a 3,000 square foot building. Uh, the uh, office component is relatively small, so the larger component of that is what we refer to as the tunnel. Uh, and it's oriented in an east uh, to west uh, orientation consistent with the uh, city uh, codes as well as the provisions of the North Lake Boulevard overlay zone. Uh, so we spent a lot of time in working uh, with staff uh, uh, on the design. Our architect, uh, uh, Mr., uh, uh, Mr. Spina and William Caldwell uh, with uh, Glidden O'Rourke, uh, really provided a, just a nice enhancement to the overall architecture as we, uh, as we work with staff. The circulation that we've proposed is a one-way circulation system. So very simple, easy. Uh, as you enter, uh, you, you would go all the way to the back of the site, plenty of stacking, uh, and then you would enter the area where you could uh, uh, go through and uh, have your car washed. Uh, we have a members only lane to the north. Uh, and then if you uh, are looking to do a car wash, you go to a kiosk, simply swipe your card uh, and go right through. If you're a member, you'll have a key fob and you can just uh, go right through the site. Uh, once you uh, uh, enter the site, uh, you go through uh, the tunnel. Uh, it's fairly, uh, fairly quick, a little, bit, a little less than a, a minute of time uh, to go through the tunnel. Again, total one-way circulation. Uh, you come out, a channelized entrance, uh, and then if you have the desire to take advantage of some of the amenities, uh, you can park, you can either vacuum your car or use some of the amenities to uh, clean your car, throw out any of the trash that you have. So we sell clean. Uh, Justin Landau, who is the, uh, watching by uh, uh, media tonight, uh, is unable to be here, but if he were here, he would be emphasizing a number of things. One is sustainability. Car washes basically reduce the amount of water that are required to be used. Uh, I, I think that the, uh, the, the, the numbers were about 250 gallons for a residential wash at, at home in your driveway. My daughters leave the hose running, so it probably is more than that. Uh, but uh, uh, when you go through the car wash, it's 100% of it is recycled, reutilized, uh, cleaned, uh, and I think that the average number is less than 50 gallons uh, a wash. So it's uh, uh, very, very uh, environmentally stable. All the products are, envi are environmentally sustainable uh, products, uh, no harsh chemicals, uh, and they have an attendant uh, on site. Uh, or multiple attendants on site, actually three, one to help you through the, the kiosk, one to help you into the tunnel, and then one out in the, in the front area uh, where they basically are responsible for aiding uh, tenants or clients as well as making sure that the site is pristine clean. That's what they're selling uh, is, uh, is clean. When someone is going to leave, uh, they have the opportunity either to uh, go out to North Lake Boulevard 
Again, one way would be a right turn westbound only. If somebody is interested to go in, in the eastbound or into the neighborhood, they would go to the uh, access way that's to the north, uh, and they would then be able to get to the signalized intersection uh, at uh, sunrise. As you, many of you may be aware, the existing channelized entrance that's uh, uh, at Roan Lane is anticipated to be modified as a part of the North Lake Boulevard uh, enhancement program. That's still several years away, uh, but uh, this project begins to set the stage for that. Uh, and uh, as we were working uh, with uh, staff, uh, we were requested to uh, see what we could do to enhance that uh, uh, roadway, or I call it a, a, a more of an alleyway, but it's a roadway uh, to the north, a connector, a linkage road connecting Roan Lane uh, and Sunrise Drive. Uh, we've agreed to, uh, to do that. Uh, your staff uh, as, and the city, as, as we've even witnessed tonight, uh, you, you all are as much concerned about the neighbors in the unincorporated area of Palm Beach County as you are as your own neighbors. And so uh, we've uh, uh, worked with staff. We're actually installing an eight-foot high concrete panel wall uh, along the northern boundary uh, uh, of our site. Uh, we're actually providing room for landscaping. We're providing uh, curb and gutter. Uh, we're repaving the roadway uh, and providing substantial landscaping. Right now in that condition today, virtually that entire alleyway, the, the, the little flag, which is about 40 feet, that virtually that entire area is paved today. So we'll be taking up that pavement, improving it, making sure that the, the, the roadway is safe, clearly defined for vehicles to travel on, uh, and then making it beautiful, of course, with, with landscaping, which you would expect us uh, to do. So here is the, uh, uh, that alleyway uh, to the north eight foot high post and panel wall, it's a concrete wall. Right now there's a fence that's there, uh, and we understand that from time to time that fence gets knocked down, and we understand the city actually is the one that goes and puts it back up, even though it's for the residents. The wall would make that permanent, curb will protect it, also with landscaping. We will be dedicating a 30 foot right of way to the city. So right now, uh, the city ha holds an easement interest in that property. Uh, we will actually be giving the city ownership interest in that property. Uh, and so that's, a, again, a benefit. Again, the city foresight, uh, foresight looking to the future, looking at making sure the uh, mobility uh, is uh, provided for not only today, but 50 years from now. We're also dedicating, as a part of this, uh, a, an additional easement to Seacoast Utility Authority. Seacoast will, uh, as a part of the I-95 improvement plan, will need to upgrade their lift station, which basically sits at the, at the terminus uh, of, uh, of where the, the connector road connects with Roan. Uh, and as a, as a part of that, they'll be extending additional force mains uh, down there under the road, and so we're providing the easements uh, uh, to Seacoast. One of the things that you'll note as you're looking at this enlarged plan uh, is that there is a lot of landscaping. So we're, we're able to put an eight-foot wall against the, uh, against the boundary to the north uh, with landscaping on the, on the west side uh, of the wall. But then we also have our required landscape buffer for the, for the project itself. Uh, that's uh, in, in addition to that, that's a 15-foot landscape buffer. And we're pleased to tell you that we're actually providing a buffer to McDonald's buffer. Uh, so uh, the residents did say that they can hear the McDonald's call boxes. Uh, and so uh, between the wall and with this landscaping, we'll be benefiting uh, that situation. And I've got some before and after pictures that I'll uh, show you uh, shortly. And we're doing an eight-foot sidewalk. We're removing the existing sidewalk that's uh, along North Lake Boulevard. We are showing the ultimate configuration and what you see uh, here today. And we'll be doing a curvilinear sidewalk with landscaping on both sides of the road. Uh, as you are, are probably well aware, uh, as we work with your staff on these many projects that we do, uh, there's a big focus now on the quality uh, of the level of service of, of even walking on a sidewalk. So if it's nice and it's lush and you're separated from the curb, it's more comfortable, it's a better level of service. So with every project that we look at, the quality of the mobility, whether it's a car, a bicycle, you know, uh, any mode of transportation uh, is looked at very carefully by your, by your staff. 
So, uh, and even, even the experience uh, of the driver, we work with uh, your staff and, and Dawn uh, uh, Sonneborn, the planner of, on the landscaping of just how the visual experience would be as somebody would even would be coming out of the tunnel. So we really paid a lot of attention to, uh, to details. Uh, landscape buffering, substantial landscaping everywhere, as we've mentioned. Also on aesthetics, uh, this is, and I'll go through the architecture in a moment. First, I'll hit on signage. Uh, we have uh, two signs on the building, very carefully placed on the, uh, uh, on the eastern tower. Uh, one of those signs, the sign that faces to the east, uh, is a waiver that's uh, supported by, uh, by your staff. We also work with your staff uh, to make sure that the, uh, that the vehicular circulation uh, uh, is as intuitive and as heads up as possible. So it says, well, if the one-way circulation achieves a lot of that, but the safest, least amount of vehicular conflict, you're not crossing traffic lanes, that's all minimized. We saw that earlier today, how, how when you have those conflicts, it can, uh, it can uh, 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 not necessarily promote as much pedestrian safety. So we have a number of uh, signs that basically will direct people uh, through the site, through all the way to get to Lone, Roan Lane or to get to Sunrise Drive uh, and to navigate uh, the facility. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Glidden uh, work, Road Work uh, worked closely with us uh, on the architecture. Uh, we wanted to come up with something that was uh, uh, forward-leaning uh, and that was uh, no, not necessarily just the same uh, architecture that we uh, typically see, something that would be of the, uh, of the future, uh, and they've done a great job. The building has two towers, uh, Eastern Tower, which is, a, which is more substantial than the tower that's on the west side of the site. Uh, there's a, a number of different materials that are utilized uh, in the architecture. Uh, there's glass that's used to uh, accentuate the vertical element and the vertical proportions of the tower. We have a material which is a, 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 a simulated, uh, uh, it's a, what we call a longboard siding in a soft gray. It provides a texture. It's horizontal in nature, but then used in a vertical proportion. Really just adds to the building. We have, we have awnings. Uh, that uh, are used, architectural awnings on the building, uh, as well as uh, recesses that are used with the uh, uh, flat roofs. Uh, and then the uh, material that's used on the eave uh, underneath here is a cementitious material that's a long-lived, it's polished, so it's not a metal material, but it's, a, uh, it's an architectural material that's proven to stand the test of time. Uh, in the front uh, here, we also have provided some architectural awnings. Uh, which are a, a metal uh, trellis element in a soft arch uh, designed to provide a shade and shadow pattern on the ground as well as to provide uh, uh, some level of, uh, of shade uh, protection or dimin diminished uh, sun uh, uh, from uh, those that might stop and want to utilize the amenities uh, uh, of, the, uh, of the site. Here's another view. Uh, the landscaping, uh, if you've noticed and paid any attention, is substantial. Uh, there is uh, a, a lot of landscaping that's used uh, uh, everywhere, uh, but it's also been placed so that it's very uh, specific and intentional to the architecture, where we've used mass trees to accentuate the vertical elements, Japanese blueberries also, podocarpus columns to really emphasize the architectural uh, design, a lot of native ground covers uh, utilize uh, palm trees to accentuate the vertical nature of the tower. Again, you can see the Japanese blueberries, wonderful ground covers, and then even some flowering trees. These are, these are uh, uh, hibiscus standards, uh, white wing hibiscus, one of my favorite uh, uh, that are there. Uh, just so as drivers are going through the kiosk, there's some nice aesthetic uh, uh, beauty for them as well. Uh, here's another view. Uh, we, uh, we have been asked to, to look at, we had been proposing gumbo limbo trees, and uh, we've been asked to consider an alternative species, so we're going to make those the native Clusia rosea, uh, which is the, uh, uh, not the small leaf Clusia, but the large one, very clean, doesn't drop very many leaves, uh, will provide a nice canopy uh, and some shade, so that's what we're uh, proposing for, uh, for those areas in lieu of the gumbo limbos. Uh, that are shown uh, on the plan. Here's a, a view at the, uh, at the kiosk. As you've read in the staff report, there's no noise, no speakers. Uh, we have an attendant that will be here uh, uh, guiding and aiding 
uh, uh, folks, but basically they swipe their card and, and move through, or they use a key fob in the members only. So this is that beautiful view. I'm going to go back again so you can see it. That beautiful view uh, that currently exists. This is a, a sunrise looking to the west. That's that flag portion of the lot. A lot of pavement that's there. Uh, you can see McDonald's buffer is not very substantial. So we're providing a lot of organization to that, the fence adjacent to the residential area. And so you can see uh, the level of improvement that will be. Uh, so this uh, roadway will have uh, curbs on, on both sides of it. Uh, a substantial landscaping. Uh, we're actually putting a Clusia hedge all the way along uh, in front of McDonald's, uh, meandering grasses, uh, tababuyas, Shady Lady Black Olives. We're putting uh, landscaping uh, on the wall. Uh, and then we've also had been uh, asked to consider putting a, uh, an uh, F curb uh, along that side of the wall. And so we just want to put on the record that we're going to put an F curb. Actually, I like it better because it narrows the road, right? You, it, it reduces the visual width of the road in addition to uh, providing opportunities uh, for drainage, but it's, uh, I do like that. So uh, I, when staff asked, uh, suggested, I, I got a call from your city engineer, I said, of course, because uh, we do that a lot, to try to narrow, reduce, the, make it more traffic calm. And so this is the view looking from Edwin Watts uh, to, the, uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the east. Uh, again, substantial landscaping. We have a Clusia. A uh, Clusia hedge that will can grow up, you know, six, seven feet if we want, uh, and so this will actually become a very nice road. There's also lighting, so we also this road will also be illuminated, so uh, uh, and and the opportunity to you know to be patrolled with uh, with speed limit signs and the things that just aren't there today, and the width pa of pavement there. Uh, in fact, the day that I was out there, there was actually one of those vans, uh, one of those twelve you know, 16 car vans unloading cars. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, it, it, it's, it, it's annoying to the residents. And, and it does make some noise. And so we appreciate, even though they're in Palm Beach County, uh, your attention to protect everybody. So here's an, a, another view uh, of that. And again, there's, there's my curb. I knew I drew a curb in there. So that's it. We have a, a limited number of waivers. Staff is supporting them all. Uh, one is for a monument sign. Uh, our property line is uh, just under 500 feet, so we're not entitled to a monument sign. Monument sign, we think, is good for wayfinding. Uh, this, uh, your, your code is generally uh, dealing with menu boards, is dealing with generally fast food restaurants. This is a little different, so we do have to ask for a waiver. I mentioned the one wall sign. Uh, your code dealing with parking is not really dealt, dealing with these types of facilities, so uh, we had to uh, uh, be creative with your staff uh, on, on that, and we came up with a good solution. And then, of course, the directional signs we've discussed. Uh, and with that, uh, more than happy to answer any questions. We thank you for your time. It's such a pleasure to be here uh, in the city of Palm Beach Gardens. There's no better place to do business, so uh, thank you very much for having us. <laughs> well, we got Marcy back on the council, the so there's a lot more trees. There's the a lot more trees. was good right after now. that last comment. Then it went downhill. <laughs> trees and curves. Does staff have a presentation? I, I don't think so. I think the applicant's presentation was quite thorough. You know, I did want to make one point to emphasize, which I, I believe Mr. Herring did cover. Um, but in addition to the proposed replacement of the existing fence with a eight-foot concrete wall and landscaping and new asphalt. The applicant has been coordinating this project with the adjacent property owner and was able to ach achieve uh, an agreement which treats the existing fence off-site um, similar to the proposed fence. So what is going to happen as a result of this project is that the applicant is going to construct a, a brand new eight-foot concrete wall along the entire stretch of North Lake, uh, or excuse me, of Roan Lane. So it will be seamless, and the asphalt will be completely repaved as well. So it will look very unified and upgraded overall. So we appreciate the applicant working with us, and we do support this petition. We support this resolution and the waivers, and we're happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Okay. Madam Mayor. Yes. Just on that point, uh, Brian Seymour, for the record, uh, attorney for the applicant, I want to thank both your city attorney and planning director. The work with an off-site neighbor is not always easy. 
And um, there were a lot of calls, emails, discussions, how do we do this to make this work? And um, yesterday, I think it was uh, Max and, and I, along with the neighbor, and, and we're able to get an agreement in place for y'all that allows us to do this. So I appreciate uh, the staff working with us on that so that we can provide that beautification. As a result, also, there were some changes to the conditions. And so I would just want to make sure that the record's clear on any approval of the resolution, that there are conditions that I think it was this morning, Max? Yes, it was. Yeah, that we worked through this morning. Okay. So I'm going to close the hearing. Can I get a motion and a second to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. okay. Bring it back for discussion. I Any do have a questions, comments? Things. Yes. Go ahead, Marcia. Uh, We're going to start at this end. Okay. I mean, I'm. Well, okay. yeah. How many employees will there be um, on this or at this site uh, in total at one time, ma the maximum at one time? The normal number of employees will be three. Right. Uh, at times, it's supervision, additional supervision with uh, Justin and his team and the other uh, supervisors that manage multiple facilities are there. You know, I would think you could have four, maybe five, but generally we, th three will be there. One, one, at, one at, the, at the kiosk, one at the tunnel, and, and one in the front parking area. And that's 99% of the time. And all of the services provided are, uh, are there, well, I, I shouldn't be saying it that way. Um, the detailing, the car wash services, so it's all the patrons are doing it, doing the, those things themselves, that correct? Is, that is correct. So there aren't any employees doing additional that car correct. washing type Just services. Just assisting, providing rags, uh, you know, spray cleaners, those types of things. Okay. Um, and I do want to thank you very much for changing the curbs. Um, I feel that it, uh, it is a better plan that way, and I thank you, and also for changing the uh, gumbo limbos because they're messy. You're and very a car welcome. wash didn't make any sense to me. Thank you. Chelsea, you have a great. Thank you. Thank, thank you for listening to the residents. Thank you for taking the time to try to meet with them or, and Zoom with them and get creative with that. Thank you for fixing Sunrise. Thank you for fixing Rowan. Thank you for all of the sustainability, which you know I was going to ask you all about that. So this is great. I just have one question. I see trash cans. Are there going to be recycling bins? Because I know people will also be cleaning out their cars, and there won't just be trash. There'll be some plastic. I They'll don't know the problem. answer to that, but Mr. Seymour might get a text here in a minute, but I, I presume that there would be recycling so that people could recycle trash. That would be lovely. Plastic. Okay, great. But no, looks good. Thank you very much. As soon as, and as, thank, soon as he responds, I'll let you know. Okay, great. And the green space, uh, maintaining our green space is really important, so thank you for that as well. Looks great. Mark? What are the hours of operation? Hours of operation, if, uh, if I recall, are 8 to 8.30 p.m. Monday through Sunday, Monday seven days through, a week? Yeah, Monday through Sunday. 365 days a year? 365 days a year, yes, sir. No music? No music, sir. <laughs> and, and in fact, in fact, we, we are actually, there's a prohibition against music. We're even posting signs so that when somebody's in their car doing something that they cannot play music. Very loud. That's right, yes, sir. Got it. Carl? I was just going with the obvious that it's not a traffic attractor. You know, we don't need anything else like on North Lake. So Thanks, if it sir. cuts down on traffic, it looks beautiful. My very green council ask all those questions. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, as long as it cuts down on traffic on North Lake, I'm, and it looks like a great spot for that. Cool. So we're green and we're green. recyclable. Everybody's, we're going to get a trash can out there. And it oh, deals Chelsea, with cars, we'll name on it. We're, we're going to get recycling. <laughs> I got a yes to the right. question of recycling. So and we're cutting down on the record, traffic. Recycling well. will take place. Carl, I know that's important right. to you. Which cuts down on the omissions on North Lake Boulevard as well. It's super important for our, my green friends. Go, and, go, go green. <laughs> Let and, go electric. And, and Carl, I went to the site, and that alleyway or now roadway, that is, has a lot of traffic on it. I was on a Saturday of last week, and I just can't believe how much traffic is on that. And there are... Besides the white striped marking, there's nothing. Yeah. So this is going to be a huge improvement to that area. So yeah. I'm teasing, but um, it's great, great usage. I mean, it's a good spot. Yeah. So it's cool. Thank you, sir. Question, Don. On um, in in the prep materials, it talked about working with FDOT and that 
interchange and what you're doing as far as how that's going to affect one or the other. Can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, I, I can, and, and we, we have had several uh, calls and Zoom calls with uh, Florida Department of Transportation who is in charge of the uh, I-95 project. In fact, we've provided them with all of our design files and what we're, what we're doing. Uh, our proposed project fits without any changes to the I-95 project as it's, as it's proposed and going forward. Uh, I think my understanding is is that's a 2024 project, mm -hmm. if I if if I recall correctly, uh, and uh, everything's in place to do that. Obviously, the easement that we give to Seacoast uh, also helps that, but we're giving you the right away, and they could have gotten it from you after uh, after that. What I understand is that the existing channelized, uh, it's signalized and channelized. It's a, a eastbound. Uh, left turn to go north on Roan Lane, that ends up getting cut off as a part of the North Lake Boulevard project. There's really not any other significant changes with the, with the ramping, but that gets cut off. And so this road will become even more important in the future. Not only should it, should it look good, because it's the entrance to people's homes, there's the entrance to the, there's a church back there and some other uses. So people will come down sunrise, sunrise, sunset, sunrise, sunrise, <laughs> sunrise um, and make the left onto that access road to cut down to road because they won't be able to make that left turn anymore. So that, they'll that's, be cor to... that's correct. Madam Mayor, I, I do have a point to make because I had the opportunity to participate in this week's um, TPA Technical Advisory Committee and was reviewing thoroughly the proposed draft T TIP program, which is the Comprehensive Wide County Road TIP program, and it was brought to our attention that it appears that this project for DOT may be pushed out to 2026. So uh, that's the latest from DOT. Uh, I asked for more information because it is the draft TIP, but that's everybody's information, 2026. But yes, Mr. Herring is correct. You know, it, it's a capacity issue and being able to address additional capacity to be able to provide that storage queue for all of those stacked on North Lake Boulevard who want to go south, who are currently going, it's, it's the mm -hmm. westbound south movement, in order to provide for that additional stacking, the closure of that median was proposed. And, and that's what's precipitating that whole closure of Roanling. But it does appear that that project is being pushed out a little bit based on our latest info, latest information. Okay, thank you. All right. So hearing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 5 to 0. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so where are we now? I am like. So we are at items for council action, discussion, items of interest, and committee reports. And remember, we're not going through a whole list of everything and anything, but we do want to hear about what was important. You have? Yeah, um, actually, we do have something important to talk about very briefly. Very briefly. Very briefly. Actually, it's good news, I think. Um, we had a call today, a, a Zoom call with... Congressman Mast about our Palm Beach Gardens post office. So you guys all know that this has been going on since 2003 through various con congressmen uh, in our district. We had the conversation um, through our residents uh, a couple years ago. Then we had our uh, letter to the congressman uh, a couple, about a year and a half ago. Then we had our uh, Chamber of Commerce breakfast about a month ago where we, uh, where I was able to ask the congressman in front of the business community about what to do about this, and he said, let's go cut the grass, and we thought, well, that's a nice offer, but not really a, a sustainable offer. So uh, kudos to the congressman and to his staff for organizing with the, uh, yeah, well, call it what you want, but local government is nice sometimes, and little things get done. That actually makes a positive difference in the residents' lives. And uh, I was actually kind of grateful to see um, that they actually have a plan. Uh, whether or not that it maintains beyond today, I don't know. But if you drive by, and I drove by on the way here today after our meeting and again tonight, uh, they actually did put the mulch. 
they cut the grass. The, the, the facade of the building is no longer got weeds growing up. The, the fences around the property look a little cleaner. They actually have a plan to um, pressure clean the, the, the property on uh, May 16th, the building, uh, go through some more um, maintenance on the sprinkler systems and to maintain the property better. They have a new contractor that is uh, approved by the union. Our city manager offered any help that they may need, uh, but they basically said, nope, nope, we got it. So I'm actually a little bit proud of us as a city that we were able to get them to come and use, uh, come and use our post office as an example of how they may be able to maintain our post office going forward. And the congressman and his staff said, well, now we've got to make sure that the rest of the post offices in our district uh, can get maintained as well. So, you know, I don't, not that I don't care about the other post offices around the area, I certainly do, but I'm glad to see that uh, thanks to the city manager and staff for writing the letters and for all of you and our residents who keep sending emails and, and calling us to put some pressure that maybe something will get done. So that's it. Well, thank you. Ron, for do you have anything to add to that? Hmm. Thank, thank you for you. asking. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for taking the lead on this and putting him on the spot in an election year on this. So. <laughs> Whatever works. Yeah, looks good. That's going forward. Who else? Anybody else have any comments? I just comment, have, comments I just have, on this or, no, or, no, no. or okay, another comment. other committee reports or, in, 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 go ahead. I just wanted to say before everyone left, I wanted to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. I know we some of them have already left, but, um, yeah, it's just a, a special coming up. Wait, so aren't we supposed to wish that. all the mothers? The guys aren't we supposed all to wish the all the mothers? Yeah, happy, and, Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day to all yeah. of you. And I know we had proclamations that we passed, um, but I didn't want, I, I'd kind of be remiss to not uh, appreciate our code enforcement officer because, officers, because we have a, a wonderful code enforcement uh, division of our city and they really, really work hard. So I wanted to just kind of say that and then also same thing with trauma awareness especially after this past year um you know that that's a special uh proclamation as well with uh, everyone and that kind of is a a blanket for so many people that are involved in trauma and our fire department for sure has dealt with a lot especially over the last um year throughout this pandemic and i just wanted to uh, point them out as well i know we passed the proclamation but i just wanted to specifically uh, call those out as well and also to the moms, so that was it. If we hadn't lost power and had to, to break, I was gonna ask somebody to read the list of the proclamations, because I do think that it's, you know, if we're having them in there, we should at least read the titles, but uh, we kind of lost some time there. So, Chelsea, you have anything? No, I don't wanna go through a big list, just um, some good things that are happening. There was one thing I did get to attend, which was the Let's Move Palm Beach County Awards where they had a competition to see how many people could move the most, and they got over 60 million minutes, and Wellington won. They actually had a team, so maybe next year we could compete against them a little bit. M You're in charge bit. of putting the team together. Yes, deal. Okay. Mr. Carl? No, but I will, I will tell you what I learned. You guys know I got sick for about two or three weeks, hacking and all that stuff, and then my puppy broke her arm in three places. It was horrible the pain. But when I was sick, um, Chelsea, Chelsea brought me beer bread yeah. and, and Marcy brought me chicken noodle soup and Arlene brought me the Spanish version of chicken noodle soup. So I was, I was good and I had no idea that beer bread and chicken noodle soup can make the world a better place. Right, <laughs> I mean, that beer bread's There's ridiculous. And, um, so I texted her and I offered her $10,000 if she would bring over some more beer bread. I got nothing. <laughs> and, I, and, I got a, and I got a plant. I expected more out of Mark, but that's par for the bring you. I'll bring a Bud Light. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you guys for thinking of me. It was, it's, Absolutely. It was nice. I got my We're butt I'm glad you're, you're feeling better. So I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm not hacking. In that case, the meeting is adjourned. Right. Awesome. Thank you.